This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com, the global men's lifestyle brand that's disrupting the beard market. <laughs> Welcome back to Odyssey News. I am Mike Odyssey, and the discoveries continue. We are talking about Switch 2, and the discoveries are patents that could be related to the new gimmick, right? What, what is the new gimmick, Mike? Well, you know, every console Nintendo releases has this new gimmick, right? The we had the Wii Motion and the, you know, the, the holding with the hand and the hit the bat and stuff. And then the Wii U had the pad, you know, that pad thingy, that disasters. And then the Switch has the Switch. You're switching, you know, you switch from console to, 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 to console to handheld. You know, that's the gimmick from that one. Now, one, the one of these patents are basically talking about the gimmick for the next Switch or for the next Nintendo console. And uh, I think we should start talking about that, right? Let me just stop talking and start showing you some more. Welcome to the Odyssey. Hit the like, press play. You're running with the squad like Zeno Blade. Drive like Mario, we on a... Hey, my Odyssey. Well, it's time to throw away that bulky beard trimmer you've been using for years that has dull blades, 10 useless guard attachments, and a bulky power cord. It's time to upgrade to the new Manscaped beer has your trimmer and level up your beard game i'm super excited to be one of the first to take a sneak peek at the beard hedger by manscape let's check it out the 7200 rpn motor and the titanium coated t-blade can cut through the thickest hair in a single stroke whether you prefer a five o'clock shadow or a lame lion's mane you can choose from 20 different hair cutting lengths with the zoom wheel that uses only one guard. That's right, there's only one guard needed for 20 different hair lengths. You can finally ditch all those useless guard attachments that clutter your bathroom drawers. The beer hedger was designed with a unique cutting angle to have its comb lift flat lying hairs for single stroke trimming. This beer trimmer is waterproof cordless and rechargeable so you can use it in the shower save time and create less mess it has up to 60 minutes of runtime and it has a three level power indicator that tells you when it needs a recharge it even comes with a really cool grab and go travel case if you're thinking about growing your first beard or you are a beard pro manscape makes beard care easy Go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off free shipping when you use promo code MikeO at checkout. That's 20% off plus free international shipping with promo code MikeO at manscaped.com. Join over 8 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped today. <laughs> so before we get into today's stories, you see, I want to ask you one thing. I want to ask for your subscription. You see, I'm legally blind and I'm basically losing my sight uh, as we go. I don't have sight on my left eye and I have about 40% sight of my right eye and it's just fading away, right? The doctors right now have nothing else they can do, but I have a dream to become a full-timer on YouTube by the end of this year and I, I'm, I want to ask you for your help. Uh, if you subscribe to this channel right now, it'll only take a second. For me, it'll just change my life. So if you could do that right now, I would really appreciate it. Here we have Monday through Friday Nintendo news. On the weekends, we have products and reviews. And we also have the occasional and topic podcast with your favorite voice actor. So I would really appreciate it. It would mean the world to me. And I just want to thank you in advance for giving me your subscription. Let's move on to today's stories. Here we are. Here we are. This is my huge um, list of patents that I basically have to go through over, over, and over to find these patterns that I found here for you, for your benefit, for your benefit and your edification. <laughs> and, um, uh, well, let's go ahead and start with the first one, right? Right here. When the first condition relates to what changed, let's go ahead and start. It's April 13, right? Nintendo is very, very, very clever. They say, what are we going to do on April 13? Oh, yeah, let's do that, 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 um, Legend of Zelda trailer. That way we can go ahead and drop this pattern just gonna shadow drop it and no one will ever find out. Well, uh, Mike is always looking for patents every single day, so I guess, uh, yeah, I'm here. April 13, today, 
okay, as of the recording of this video, I don't, I don't know if this video coming today or tomorrow, but still, April 13th, today was the launch of the trailer. Let's go ahead and find here. This is basically images, okay? This is not a game. These are images that are related to the actual gimmick, okay? So if you see here, when a first condition related to a change in the position of a virtual microphone in a virtual space is satisfied, resi residual virtual microphone is placed at a position of the virtual microphone before the change in this position. And residual virtual microphone acquisition sounds data whose volume is set on the basis of a distance between the residual virtual microphone. <laughs> so I'm guessing this has to do with the with the residual visual microphone. So you we're gonna have a microphone in the next switch. Um, for example, in this image, the microphone will be placed where the person is. Okay. And if you look at the other images, um, basically this is this is just like the I, I would say this is inside the actual switch right here. The uh, the components of it you got the the storage section, the processor, the control communication, the controller right here. This is a controller, right? We got the image sound output. We got the speaker and we have the display. Now this is the thing. What is this missing? This is missing a display of itself. So there's a possibility that the next Nintendo console may not be, may not be able to dock. Maybe it's just a, a, a console that you, that you use normally on TV, right? Um, there's a possibility if this is a switch, because right now the display unit, this will be the TV, this will be the speaker, you know, and this will be the in and out of the, you know, the, the, the in and out of the signal, HDMI cables. Uh, but the, yeah, here we have the same exact image for purposes. For example, there's a virtual camera right here, virtual microphone right there. That looks like it could be where the switch are, or the switch is, right? And uh, and this whole bunch of images, but this is the, just the first one that kind of talks about that type. We have a microphone and a camera. Now let's go over to the next pack. And this one has a little more information. Of course, it was also uh, published today, the A April 13th filed on September 21, 2022. And uh, this one is called the information processing system transmits as output data, at least any of processing target event log and displays and generate base, um, blah, 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 right? That's basically what you listen to. But here we have it. This is the, the entire base system of the next gen console. We have virtual game space. This is the console. Virtual game space. This is the console. These are the TVs back here. These are the controllers right here, right? These are the controllers. Server, I guess there's a server. We have two smartphones that can also be used, okay? We've been through this patent many, many, many times before when it comes to not that, well, not this clear. This actually shows everything. This shows the consoles, this shows the controllers, this shows the smartphones, and this has a representation of the server because there will be more online interactive thingy. Like maybe you always have to be online to play games just like Nintendo, like Xbox did with the Xbox Series X or whatever, you know? So they're, they're always showing this type of server up there, this, this, this PC server up there, and then it's kind of connected towards consoles, right? These are TVs back here. These are the consoles right here. And then these are the controllers. Obviously, you know that's the controller. It actually looks like a like a like a Wii controller mixed with a Joy-Con, and I, maybe that's even the same shape of the controller of the brand new controller, right? Well, maybe they're squared like that, right? Nintendo's kind of weird that, that way. But here we have what looks like the next gen console gimmick. Okay, virtual space game, virtual space game two. You know, there could be some VR into this, but this is the same exact image. It just it just kind of inverted there. I guess they don't want us to look at it too much because, you know, it gives out too much information. But here we have, again, there's a processor, there's a memory, there's a communication unit, there's an output interface unit, okay, which is the display, the TV, uh, game pro program, system program, log data, wireless communication, controller. You see this? This is basically the system. Now, this system right here. Um, it's not dockable. I don't, I, I don't think this is a, uh, 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 if it's a system, it's not going to be, uh, a switch system. It's not going to be 
like handheld and dock mode. I think it's only going to be dock, like 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 every other console, right? And if this is the system that they're going for, then there is no more handheld on this part. Um, output device means the wireless here and also display for the TV. And um, this particular system here, again, patents are it are what Nintendo issues when they want to protect something, right? This could be an idea for Nintendo for Nintendo to protect this individual thing they have here. Maybe they'll have one where you can dock it and take it with you or or not. And maybe they'll have this, this more powerful version of the console that is only played on dock mode. Um, you know, who knows? But at least this one, I don't feel it's actually like a like the one you actually switch and take it with you and then you dock it. Cause it doesn't look like it has the, the components in order to dock it. It's just what it is. The controllers, the interface for the TV, communication, memory processor, the game storage system, program, and you know, all that stuff. If we continue to look here, we see the same exact thing. It's just the same exact thing. Game device, portable apparatus. Now, the question is, the question is, will the next gen switch will be be, be a base model? that doesn't go anywhere but if we can go up here we know now that we can use our smartphones with that next gen console and therefore that is the way that we play portably we as long as we have an internet connection the server the server up here can also transmit to our phones so therefore we have we have the console we play on tv it's connected to the server, to Nintendo Online account, right? So, and then the Nintendo Online account, you can also play on your smartphone, and thus your smartphone being the handheld version of your of your games. Okay, so that's what it looks like here. That this could be a new type of of, of handheld um, system that doesn't use it uh, doesn't use an actual handheld, but it uses your phone. Maybe Nintendo has kind of perfected the cloud version thing. Hopefully they did. I know Google Stadia had a really good one. Google, the problem with Google Stadia is that they, they didn't have any games. Not that they didn't have the technology. The technology was phenomenal. I played it the entire time, but they just they just didn't have games. Then they shut down their 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 Google um, development company for games, and then that's when it all went downhill. All their third party companies. Didn't want, did not want to develop for Google Stadia, and that's why it shut down. Not because they didn't have the technology. So hopefully here we have some technology that can allow us to play, of course, on our phones. Right? We can play all of the games that we own on our phones. Now, now if you look at this patent, that is basically what you, we, we see here. We see a console that is no longer a Switch. Um, we see virtual space here. We, we see the controllers. We see a server that can transmit those games over to our phones so that we can play those games on our phones. Uh, I'm guessing they might they might use some kind of system where you can put your phone and the, the, the Joy-Cons in a slot, right? It might come with this type of uh, base where you, put, you, you insert your phone and you insert the Joy-Cons so you can actually play the games on your phone as well. Um, but that, that's the only thing I can think about when it comes to that, uh, cause right now, believe it or not, right, uh, the, the switch OLED has a seven inch, seven inch screen. They have phones that have 7.5 and even eight inch screen tablets and stuff like that, bigger screens. And while this patent is really giving me those vibes, like we're saying goodbye to the handheld portable of the switch and, um, you know, I don't know. You guys tell me down below in, in the comments. So that is it for the patent. Let me know what you guys think down below. And then we'll see you in the conversation down below and see what we come up with. Right. Let, let's put let's put our heads together and figure this out because it's looking pretty fishy. All right, guys, that is going to do it for today's investigative episode of Odyssey News. But before I let you go, I have two important things I need to let you know. Number one, never give up. And number two journey on. Peace. We are on a journey. 
Looking back on the things that we've taken for granted But feels like we're learning to be better without what's 